and the Debrink Channel is back. And today we are talking about Lake Oroville. We're going to be talking about California in general and the amount of snow that has fallen and the amount of snow that's going to fall. And wow, it's just crazy. We are currently looking at video from my new colleague, Steve, who's going to be getting me video from time to time. And I appreciate his efforts for making this footage possible. This is from yesterday. He was up at Lake Oroville and he was getting footage for me. He will be going down to Lake Full some soon too as well so I'll have more footage from there as well from my understanding everything's going to be great so welcome aboard Steve and we continue to roll on and we are going to start out at windy.com today and this is great so we're at windy.com and the lake has come up quite a bit since December as we talked about and we'll talk about it a little bit more here in a minute but first we want to talk about this weather forecast the next 12 hours you're talking about 0.74 at the lake that's almost an inch another inch to add to your 27 inches of rain that has fallen at the dam the dam's right here and yet another 0.49 that'll be almost 28 inches by the time it's all said and done that's just within the next 12 hours we go to the next 24 hours 0. 0.66 and it rained there yesterday i know this because steve was waiting for the rain to stop he's like i gotta wait for the rain to go through before i can get footage and i was like i don't blame you there so 1.46 and you gotta remember the valley is always wetter than everything else so the three days this thing starts to light up you're talking about 3.2 inches here within the next three days here and this is the european model in the gfs it's not as aggressive i want to state that the gfs has been more accurate this year than the European however the European at time done fairly well so we will continue to roll on here and we got Grass Valley 1.63 Bear Valley down here 1.19 Yosemite Valley 1.78 and then we come up here to Mount Shasta you have 1.8 we go to the next five and we're still to GFS and the GFS starts to light up a little bit more you're talking about 2.14 five days it's fairly accurate it's not crazy accurate but it's fairly accurate we come down here 2.31 we come down here to bear valley and you're talking about 2.29 but then we go to the next 10 days and watch this 10 days this thing lights up a lot now like i said the gfs has been fairly accurate this winter especially for california i've been watching this since november and this thing has been pretty well spot on so are we going to get around five inches i'm saving the best for last because the european model is totally disagreeing and you're not going to Leave how much an insane amount but the european has been known to over exaggerate numbers before so this might be more closer to accurate than that so 4.41 we go down here to the american river down here and you could see 5.5 that's a ton of precipitation we go down here to bear valley 3.68 we come over here to yosemite valley 3.30 so that's what we got a decent swap now watch this i'm going to go back to the european model i'm going to go to the three day i'm going to go back to the european model because that's where we were and like i said three inches in the next three days we go to the next five days this thing starts to light up they're talking almost five inches within the next five days here the gfs is talking five inches within the next 10 days now this is the interesting part this is the part that's going to make your head spin check this out 16 inches here at lake orville right here you scoot over a little bit more you're talking 16 and a half inches 15 inches and is this new snow 90 inches so luckily a lot of this is new snow and not rain because if this was rain on top of all the snow that you got oh, wow but this is still dangerous within itself if you already got a ton of snow to begin with and then you get almost another 88 to 90 inches of precipitation on top of this like this is in the form of snow and you get another 16 inches if this comes to pass you're talking 14 15 16 there's 17 somewhere just an absurd amount of rain here for lake oroville this could be dangerous if this comes to fruition now once again i can't reiterate this enough the gfs is calling for 3.63 there the europeans calling for 15.6 where will this end up who knows but this is catchy this could be definitely be dangerous if this comes to fruition 16.67 there 3.28 i'm hoping for the 3.28 because you guys have received a bunch the 16.6 that's dangerous that is very very dangerous so we will watch it now this is not much of a rainmaker for southern california see like my friends at lake havasu that are in arizona zero inches we come down here to san diego 0 0.3 los angeles gets a little bit of precipitation my friends over at bakersfield 0 0.45 my friends up in sacramento 
you're talking about 6.64 up here at Lake Shasta 12.46 so you get the idea this could be a very extreme event coming down the pike and if this happens we are in a world of trouble I didn't have time to update the graphs I was out late with the family and whatnot so today we are going to look at the models from California and we will go look at them now so here we are at the California Data Exchange Center water resources you can see your April 1st date has 136 percent 151 percent Northern Sierra Trinity Central has 175 percent 196 percent these 175 is your April 1st. This will continue to climb as you get closer to April 1st. This will only climb if you get precipitation at this point in time in the game. And this will just get closer to this number every day because we are already at the fifth day of March. So every time they update this, these two numbers will get closer because they'll start way far apart and they get closer as time moves on. So you are 209 for April 1st and 231 this is going to end up over 200 unless a big rainstorm comes and melts it before that gets there. This has been an historic winter for California. They have never received this amount of snow in recording history. I'm not saying that never ever, but since they started recording, they haven't received this much ever. So this is fantastic as long as it melts slowly. If it melts fast, we are in a world of trouble. Let's hope that it melts slowly. If it melts slowly, there could be snow way into May. It may maybe even longer. The further north you go, it could last for quite a long time because cold equals cold and it makes everything cool. So drought equals hot and it makes everything dry. Kind of like rain equals rain. It makes everything wet because whenever it starts to evaporate, the air becomes moist around it and it rains more. That's just the way it is, especially in the Midwest. When they grow corn in the Midwest, everything's humid and we get afternoon thunderstorms more times than we have drier weather. And that's not always the case, but for more times than not, it is. So the same effect could happen in California as well so we'll be watching to see if that happens and let's continue to roll on we are still at the california data exchange center here and you can see that you are at 27.16 inches of rain at the dam and your inflows are 6230 your outflows are 72 and you can see that they ramp this up at nighttime they have for a while that's at the hyatt power plant there and we are at 72 out we are at 6230 in your storage acre feet is currently 2,617,845 so the lake continues to rise as you saw from the video earlier you can see the current water level is 835.45 and we will go look and see what the changes since yesterday have been. As seen here at lakesonline.com, you can see that the water level is 835.45. Changes since yesterday, 0.46. This thing continues to climb and we go back to 2019 and you're still, it's starting to get closer to where it was in 2019. You could see, like I said, they started letting water out around April 7th. Will that happen this year? It's just hard to say. And then they stopped abruptly. It came all the way up to about five feet from the top. Had they not let water out here, then the dam would have overflowed. For those of you who didn't know, we were pretty close to the top in 2019. Now, if this all melts quick, they're going to have to have this open, and there's still a possibility that they could get higher than 901 this year. Now, they did revamp the emergency spillway, so there's an outside chance that that could be used this year if that snow melts rapidly. Now, if that's a slow, easy melt, then we are good, but if it's a fast melt, we could be in trouble because it's it's a lot of snow up above Lake Oroville. So changes since yesterday here is 0.46. So this is coming up slowly. That's good instead of fast. We don't need a fast rise because if it comes up fast, that's where like it did here, you can see where it come up fast. You can see since about January 16th, it's just been a slow, easy, steady climb. And that's what you want. You don't want a fast. They can control that. But if you get these high spikes where it comes way up, that's where things get scary. So we'll be watching this and let's hope for slow and easy melt right so let's continue to roll on here i haven't talked about the drought in a minute it's been a couple weeks so we are at the drought monitoring and you can see that parts of california are now completely out of the drought especially in the sierra mountain range here you're still in severe drought along the sacramento river here and trinity's numbers reflect this big time you're still in severe drought on the east side close to nevada and we scoot down here you can see that there's still an extreme drought in nevada 
and they're still in extreme drought in Utah. So they definitely could use some more precipitation, but you can see that the, it's starting to get closer. The white's starting to move more, more and more together. So we will see what happens ultimately. There's really not a whole lot of drought, though, other than in Utah, Nevada. There's really not a lot of red on this map from the Continental Divide West, just mainly in Oregon, Nevada, and Utah. So Colorado River is in really good shape for, for not being in drought this year. So that's fantastic. But they need that kind of 16 inches of snow over here. Some meteorologists on YouTube have been saying that there could be a shift and more snow could be hitting Colorado we'll be waiting to see if that comes to pass and if it does that'll be fantastic news but who knows that's a long way out but here we are like I said we are getting closer and closer to being out of drought I don't have a lot of time left it's already 10 o'clock here central time and I have other things to do today so I'm going to look at the percentage of capacity next Trinity's only at 33%. So Trinity's still the big loser here as reflected from the drought map. You can see that it hasn't really come up. Now some of that's locked up in snow. Be really nice to get some rain there at Trinity. You can see Chasta's still coming up. It's 61%, 83% for this date. Lake Oroville, 74%, 116% for this date. New Bullards, 81%, 115% for this date. Folsom's 59%, 114% for this day. Kachuma, 73%, 118% for this day. New Malone's 47%. 77% for this date. Don Pedro, 77%. 104 for this date. Kachuma's 99%. 135% for this date. Diamond Valley, 60%. 81%. Millerton, 45%. Probably the second lowest in the state other than Trinity. 70% for this date. Pine Flat, 56%. And 117%. That's all I have time for today. Thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the video. And we will see you on the next one. God bless.